When we first launched CoralCAD, we're presented with a default workspace. So we have standard toolbars, a property bar and our property palette. A palette differs from a property bar, for example, in the fact that a property bar will constantly change depending on which tool you happen to have chosen. A palette, on the other hand, remains open, docked on the side of the workspace and can be accessed at any time. Now there are various palettes and toolbars to choose from and one particularly useful palette apart from the properties palette is the tool matrix which we'll be looking at a little later on and the tool matrix can be used for customising and streamlining workspaces. The properties palette is perhaps the most important palette in the program because using the properties palette we can change the specific properties of any selected entity. Now to see how many toolbars and palettes are actually available right click in the grey space above the drawing area, move down to main and here you see a list of all the available toolbars and palettes. Another way of accessing a palette, or in this case the property palette, is to use a key shortcut, in this case control 1. And control 1 will just toggle the properties palette on and off. So let's just close that again with control 1. And of course we have the command variation and in this case we can either type the word properties or just PR and enter and this again will open up our properties palette. The palettes themselves can be changed in their appearance. At the moment all we're seeing next to the fields for entering values are icons but if you're just getting started with a program it's sometimes difficult to remember what these icons actually mean. So by right clicking at the bottom of this palette my setting at the moment is to display the icons only. I could also choose to display labels. And finally, and this is probably the most visual option of the three, I can display icons and labels. So if you're just starting with a program and you want to familiarise yourself with what the icons mean, then this is perhaps the best choice to take. Associated with each label is a field where a value can be modified or changed. However, it's not possible to change the values in fields that are highlighted in blue. Just to see quickly how the property palette works, let's draw a line and change its properties using the property palette. So I'm just going to type in line in my command window, choose a starting point and hit enter. Now I'm going to select the line because at the moment property palette is telling me that I have no object selected. So I'm going to select the line and now I can go down for example and change the colour of the line. In the geometry panel I can actually change the position of the end of the line. So if I erase the text here and type in another value, let's say 15 and hit enter, I've now changed the end position of my line. I've now drawn a second line and you can see in the properties palette that it's now telling me I have two lines. And because the properties of these two lines are not identical, under line colour we now have the word varies. This means that the properties have different values between the two lines. I'm just going to press escape to deselect the line and you'll notice that one retains its red colour. If I select just one line, again I can change the colour of this line. The property palette at the moment is docked on the side of our workspace but I can in fact move the palette around the screen and dock it if a, in a different position if I so wish. Finally at the top of the properties palette we have three icons. The first allows us to select additional entities. The second icon is for selecting entities and this will choose entities in the drawing replacing the current selection set. But we'll be looking at this more closely in one of the following tutorials. And the third icon that we have here is Smart Select which will display a dialog box for selecting entities on the basis of their properties. For example, you can select all red lines or all switch box symbols on an electrical layer. But again, we'll be looking at these properties a little more closely in future tutorial chapters. I'd just like to close off this session on palettes 
by showing you a palette that is very useful for freeing up desktop real estate and giving you more space within your workspace to create your designs without having too many toolbars and palettes blocking your view. In the command line we're going to type in tool matrix and hit enter. This opens up a window called the tool matrix window which we can actually use as a container for our toolbars. Now at the moment my toolbars are immovable and the reason for this is, is that the toolbars are locked in position. To unlock a toolbar, right click on a toolbar, go down to lock location and unclick or uncheck docking toolbars. You'll see that the toolbars now have handles at the top which I can use for dragging them into the tool matrix. So I'm just going to get my toolbars here and just drag these into the tool matrix and I can now collapse this and I've got a list of toolbars. Park this somewhere on my window and just open up the tool matrix as needed. And at the bottom of the tool matrix window is also a small collapsible set of arrows which gives me even more space for working in my drawing area. If I want to dock my tool matrix palette on the side of my screen I can right click on the palette window, go down to lock location and here we're going to choose docking toolbars. Just drag this across and I now have my tool matrix docked on the side of my window.